And for more on going green and urban settings, we're joined by Joshua Rogel. He's the Vice President of Business Development at Urban Green Energy. Josh, thanks for having, being with us tonight. Yeah, it's good to be here. Thanks for having me. Good to have you. So what would you say are the most successful type of technologies in an urban setting? Is it solar? Is it wind? Yeah, so both solar, wind, and storage can work very well in an urban setting. Typically, you're constrained by the amount of space on a roof or a, um, in a car, in a parking lot. So solar and wind can complement one another to be very successful in an urban setting. Well, the urban setting does indeed make it very challenging. Like you said, space, costs. What are the advantages then? Yeah, so um, if you look at a place like New York during Hurricane Sandy, you have issues for grid reliability. So mm -hmm. on-site generation, whether it's wind or solar or batteries, can be a great source so that during times where the power may go out, even for a short period of time, solar can act as a great backup for those types of situations. Now with a big city like New York and other major metropolitan areas, there's a big issue of bureaucracy and regulation. Yeah, sure. Is there any way to facilitate that process, to lubricate that process and make things easier in that sense? Absolutely. I think New York is really one of the best markets in the world with the NYSERDA incentives and also with the Green Bank. So it's a great example of politicians um, private capital, public companies working very closely together to create an environment that's friendly for renewables adoption. Now, what about the companies that are the leaders in this field? Absolutely, yeah. So from a technology perspective, it's the companies that are figuring out how to bring effective capital to deploy this broadly across a broad set of companies. And so it's figuring out how you bring together the best solutions like wind, mm -hmm. solar, and batteries like we do at Is UGE. Is it profitable for them, though? Are they at a point where they're actually making money? Absolutely. So if you look at companies across the sector. Who are some of the leaders, then? Yeah, so um, SolarCity is one of the leaders in the US. You have companies in battery technologies that are starting to really be quite profitable. And it's a great env environment for public equities. And uh, you'll see a lot of companies going to the public markets. Now, Joshua, you've been in projects around the globe, really. So in your experience, which countries have best utilized urban green technologies? Sure. Um, so China actually is a great example of where that's going to work very well. Um, they're expecting about 8 gigawatts of distributed generation this year in 2014 alone. So that's upwards of $16 billion worth of investments. Those are predominantly urban environments. And their returns on those can be in the 10 to 20 percent IRR range. So it's figuring out how to effectively bring capital to <clears throat> deploy that in the distributed markets. So how does one effectively bring capital? For, for a city like Beijing, for example, sure. the high rate of pollution is notorious, but yet it comes with a balance of trying to grow the economy and facilitate uh, robust uh, growth and manufacturing. So how does one strike that balance? Definitely. Um, so there's lots of mechanisms like a power purchase agreement wherein a company doesn't need to spend anything up front, and there's a long-term capital holder that gets a return on that investment over 10 to 25 years. Um, this was money that was going into mortgages previously. that are looking for asset classes that, met, that match their time horizon and their investment hurdles. So solar can be a great source to do that. So who is really driving the initiative to go green? In, in China, the government is very heavily involved in this, sponsoring a lot, the, the, the solar industry. Across the world, is it more a corporate incentive? Is it a more a, a government incentive? Who's really pushing the agenda? Yeah, so at UGE, what we do is we look at the mix between uh, financial savings, energy security, and sustainability. Mm -hmm. So if you look at companies like IKEA and Walmart, they have a corporate mandate to reduce their carbon, <clears throat> their carbon output to a certain level by 2015 or 2020. So it's really a mix of, um, of corporate actions and mandates mixed with they can save money from day one. So it's a no-brainer in many instances. Can they make money as well as saving money? Absolutely, yeah. So you're saving money from day one. You're also hedging against future electricity price increases. Um, and you have a huge marketing benefit where people see the wind and solar. Um, and it's a great way of interacting with the local community. Right. It creates a feel-good sense for the environment and, and for the local community, as you said. Well, we feel good having you here. Thank you so much. That was uh, Joshua Rogel, VP of Business Development at Urban Green Energy.